Hi there! So today I am out here and I am going to take a look at my Easy Elegance roses. <coughs> Sorry. Um, they, they look good. There's like blooms on them. They've been consistently blooming. Um, gosh, I don't know, for it, at least like a month and a half or longer. Um, they start really early in the spring and they continually bloom all season long. The cool thing about my Easy Elegance roses is, is you don't have to uh, trim off the dead blooms in order for them to keep blooming. They'll just keep blooming anyway. However, they do look a little bit better if you trim off the dead blooms. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to do that. And then I also see some bug damage. I'm not sure what type of bug damage it is. I know I had aphids on them in the spring. I sprayed them and they were perfectly fine. They were beautiful for... Uh, well since I spray them um, but I I have noticed some damage on some of my plants the last few days be from the Japanese beetles um, the Japanese beetles usually don't bug my plants too much uh, they fly in for I don't know a couple weeks or so during the season and they don't do too much damage I just kind of go around and like flick them off my plants when I see them and that kind of does the trick but I have noticed that they did get to a few different um, items in my garden and I think the Easy Elegans are one of them. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to make some just homemade household uh, bug spray and literally all it is for that I use is uh, dish soap and water. That's it. In a spray bottle. And I just spray the crap out of my plant and uh, it works really good. Um, and then I also wanted to show you guys the reason why I don't take the time and I can't really be bothered to plant uh, vegetables in my garden that the, that the bunnies are going to eat because I have friends that grow beautiful vegetables that I can buy from them. <laughs> so I wanted to show you, um, Yes, I uh, sang this weekend at church and my friend Brandon, who has his own garden, he sang with me. And um, I was like, hey, do you got any vegetables left from your leftover from your uh, market? He goes to the markets on Saturdays and sells produce. And he's like, yeah, I got carrots and cucumber and squash. So I was like, I'll take it. Um, but I mean, look at these gorgeous carrots. How could you not just want to buy them from your friend <laughs> when they look like this like i could never grow carrots like this uh the bunnies just would not allow it they just they wouldn't have it um so let's see we've got these cute little squash i've got green and yellow and then um he i got some of these uh i think he's called them patty patty pan squash and you cook them i guess just like regular squash i didn't know that and then some cucumbers because mine aren't ready yet. But anyway, I wanted to share with you the reason why I, I only grow the things in my vegetable garden that I can grow, the things that the critters kind of stay away from and the things that we eat. Um, I eat these things, but I can't grow them uh, properly because of all the bunnies and things like that. I don't have a fence. Um, that's my own problem. Um, but I also don't really want a fence, so. And the cool thing is, Brandon, my friend who grew all these things, he brought them to church and I Venmoed him some money and I got free delivery. <laughs> I, I have just learned myself, like, I'm not gonna try to do it all. I'm just gonna do the things that I have time for, the things that I know that I can grow. Um, and you know, here and there I might do like experiments on different things, uh, try things out and see, you know, if I have successes or failures or whatever and learn from that. But like, don't get discouraged if you can't grow all the different things. Like, it's actually really fun uh, to go down to your local farmer's market and buy some from the people that are growing different things that you can't grow in your garden and appreciate those people and what they can do. and. Yeah, anyway, let's go inside and um, make up that spray solution and get some of it on the road. So I'm inside, I just have this just plain old spray bottle, <laughs> that was fancy. Um, I'm gonna grab my uh, dish soap, I just have Dawn dish soap and 
squirt some in the bottle and then fill the rest of the bottle up with water. Like it's really not that big of a deal. But here, I'll show you. We'll just put, I don't know, like maybe a half an inch or so. And that'll do. Just got like that much in there. And then I'm gonna, can you see? Just put some cold water in there, kind of slow because um, then it won't bubble up so much. It's really not that fancy and it works every time. So I'll just kind of give it a little shake. We'll go spray the crap out of them. Okay, here they are. And you can see there's like holes in the leaves but they do look really pretty, at least, with holy leaves. I mean, look at that huge bloom next to my hand. It's massive. There's tons of new buds on them. Well, not tons, but there's some Here's some. Okay, I'm gonna inspect these for a second. I just, I'm just curious to see if I can find any, any bug on them. Just a disclaimer. This is usually something I do about once a week as like a preventative uh, method so that I so that this doesn't happen this isn't gonna you know, like magically um, you know fill in all the holes in these leaves these leaves that have holes like they have holes and you can't fix that but um, this is just gonna be like a preventative thing to keep uh, bugs from future destruction um, and also, like, if I did have aphids on here, this would uh, kill the aphids and um, any eggs or anything that they leave behind. But so basically, what I'm gonna do is just preventatively uh, spray spray the crap out of them <laughs> like this. Um, you know, underneath. Try not to get the blooms. Uh, it probably wouldn't hurt it. But uh, I do just kinda get even, and, and also on the buds, if you see any buds, I always spray the buds too because I feel like the bugs usually go for um, the new buds as well. So we just come around here, make sure you get all the different parts of the plant underneath the leaves. Uh, like this. Um, yeah, could have been a rose slug. I don't know, whatever it was. It was sure hungry. Oh, 
Now we're gonna trim off the dead blooms. Trim, trimity, trim. I heard something. It was just me whistling. Okay, um, what did I come down here for? Oh, something to put the trim, the trimini, trim, trimini, trims in. This'll do. I got this, um, I got three of these. <laughs> They're so cute. For three, three bucks a piece on clearance. I think that's a good deal. I thought it was. I use them all the time. Oh, and I thought this is cool. This is kind of why I actually bought them, but it says Detroit, Michigan. And that's where I'm from, Michigan. trimming off all of the, ow, the dead blooms. I really should probably put gloves on, but I can't, I don't know, the, I feel like when I put the gloves on, I can't feel what I'm grabbing. gonna cut that one off. That still looks good. I should give these dried petals to my sister. She makes beautiful jewelry with all of her dried flowers. She's got a gorgeous cut flower garden. Maybe she'll let us go see it sometime. Um, but she's got a gorgeous garden too. Oh, actually, I had this necklace that I wear. These are dried flowers in here from her garden. And then this ring, she just gave me this ring and this bracelet that she made with dried flowers from her garden. Ow. But she would probably love these dry, uh, dried rose petals. 
some of them are already dried. Okay, that looks a little better. Let me see. Hmm. I'm gonna cut this right here because they really got to that and I see some new growth right there. So hopefully that will put more energy into that new growth. And some of these are just flat out dead. You do, I, I do uh, come in here and I do clip out the dead ones for sure. You gotta do that from year to year, um, just from, you know, winter death or whatever. But yeah, for the most part, these things just keep blooming. There's a new bud right there. There's oh, three new buds. I think that's all I'm gonna do on that one. Well, here's we'll do that one. And then I see more growth coming out right there. So I think I'm gonna cut this one off. All right. Oops. Here's All right. Let's go to the next one. This one's got quite a bit of clipping leaves done. Shove it down in there. <laughs> this isn't fancy. This one has new growth. I'm just going to cut right there. That Looks like there's a bud right there that they got to. I'm gonna cut that off because there's one right next to it. Um, here's a dead one. Dead as a doornail. If I had two dozen roses and an old bottle of wine, if I really could have hung the moon, would it change your mind? If I could cry a little harder and lose a little less sleep at night, if I had two dozen roses, would it change? Dead. Probably going to come out here again and, um, just do another preventative spray uh, and hopes that this won't happen again. But it's crazy, like, you, you'd be surprised when you do this how quickly your plant turns around, like when you, when you spray it continually just to keep the bugs away. Um, I, I didn't do a good job, I let it go too long. Every time I looked at it, I was like, oh, there's beautiful blooms on it. It looks gorgeous. And then I didn't take enough time to stop and actually look at it. And this is what you get. So anyway, 
All right, let's go throw this crap away. And I don't think I'm gonna give those to my sister. While I'm out here doing this, I should cut back that other Easy Elegance rose I have. The like light blush pink one right over here. Oh, you know what though? I think I might leave it because of the rose hips. I'll show you. If I leave the dead blooms on this, it produces these really cool rose hips. And then they turn a really pretty like like an orangish red color in the fall. So I I might just leave them. See that one? While we're out here, I want to show you a little update on my planters that I planted. Um, now these planters, I found all of the items from my yard. I just dug them up from my yard and then I had a few leftover impatience that my sister grew me for free and I threw them in there. Uh, and they're doing really good. So this is one of them. I've got this Primo Pretty Pistachio. This thing was on a struggle when I planted it. It looked really, really bad. So it's starting to pop back a little bit. Um, but you can see it's still kind of struggling. It actually looks better than it did uh, where I had it. And then underneath here, there's that Plum. I think these are plum pudding. I kept saying that they were silverberry gumdrop, but they're not. I don't think they are. I think it's plum pudding. And then I wasn't sure what kind of, what color uh, impatience were going to be in here. I wasn't sure it was going to be red or pink, but it's both. So that's kind of neat. And then over here, this one is doing really great. Um, I've got, I don't remember what kind a pucara that is because I it came back from last year. This I believe is a blue Hawaii hasta and then just some Lysimachia creeping jenny I pulled from my yard. It looks like this one's gonna be a pink impatient. And then this is I think pumpkin spice and it's actually turning a lot more orange than it was where I had it, which I'm pretty excited about. That one looks pretty good. And then over here, this one is doing great as well. You can, this one gets the most sun. And man, these Beacon and Patience, like they do so well for me in the sun. It's nuts. And this Heuchera already bloomed. So I should actually come in here and trim those off. But this one's looking great too. That also has a little pretty pistachio in there that was not doing well but looks better in here than it did in my yard so yeah that's a little update on those planters i pretty excited about it that was a really short lunchtime garden project <laughs> and i think i might go inside and uh, eat some lunch and I'm thinking I might eat some of those vegetables for lunch those would be yummy yeah let's do that let's go cook some of those uh, carrots and squash and then I'm gonna are you uh gonna go in the pool with me yeah I have to um I'm lunchtime gardening right now so Oh. I had to make sure I don't have any more emails. Alright. You're home for the day? Yeah. Oh, yay! I'm gonna have a moment. I'm gonna find the vacuum. Okay. Gotta show you these. Wrinkle in time. I love these little hosta. There's a weed in there, but I'm not gonna touch it.
I think I'm gonna eat some of these carrots and I love roasted carrots. I'm gonna throw some of these in and then also probably all of, well, these. I'm gonna cut up all these ones and I'm gonna eat that for lunch. <laughs> Let me just turn on the oven to, oh, I don't know, like 425. And we'll get these cut up. And cleaned. So I stayed at like a hunting and fishing resort in Alaska and I worked there in the kitchen and we had our own garden and we grew carrots there. There's nothing like uh, fresh homegrown carrots, like they taste so good. And I had never had them like that before. We would go over and get them right out of the garden and eat them. Um, Really good, really yummy. If the wife and I are fussing, brother, that's all right. Cause me and that sweet woman's got a license to fight. Why don't you mind your own business? Mind your own business Cause if you mind your business Then you won't be minding mine Oh, the woman on the party line's a nosiest thing She picks up her receiver when she knows it's all right Why don't you mind your own business? Mind your own business Well, if you mind your business Then you won't be minding mine a little girl that wears her hair up high The boys all whistle when she walks by Why don't you mind your own business? Mind your own business Well, if you mind your business Then you won't be a mind in mind If I want a honky tonk till two or three Now brother, that's my headache, don't you worry about me Just mind your own business Mind your own business Cause if you mind your business Then you won't be minding mine Minding other people's business seems to be high talk Got all that I can do just to mind my own Why don't you mind your own business? Mind your own business Cause if you mind your business You'll stay busy all the time Alright, I cut them up to kind of little pieces So that they all kind of roast about the same And then I just put some olive oil on them And uh, this is my favorite kind of salt to use for stuff like that It's Paula Dean Silly Salt And um, you can order this online on her website or whatever But um, we actually got this in Nashville. Was it Nashville night? Yes. Yeah, we went to Nashville um, this fall, I think, or this spring or something, I can't remember. And um, we visited her uh, shop that she had and I bought this there. So anyway, I love this one and then her house seasoning is really good. I use that on a lot of different things. But all right we're gonna let that roast for probably like an hour on three well what did i put it on i think i put it on 425. i like them like kind of charred up a little bit i like them um almost kind of burnt that's how i like my roasted vegetables but all right we'll see them when they come out of the so oven i put this on for an hour it's been in for like 40 minutes um on 425 but I'm just gonna take it out and like stir it up a little bit. Woo, that's hot. And this 
Looking pretty good. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed watching me spray my roses <laughs> with just some really easy solution that I make in my kitchen and also cook up some really nice vegetables that I got from my friend. Um, all right, thanks for watching, bye.